you do combine uh, Jungian psychology and string theory to create a beautiful comprehensive picture of the human psyche, the self at the individual level and the self at the, you know, big level. So could you overview what it is that you feel you could share to encapsulate for the listener really the story that you're unfolding in your book, um, however you would like to do that. I, I would just love it if you could take somebody on the tour and certainly you can't tell them everything in the book because it took you years to write it and there's a fair bit there. But if you give, you know, if you were sitting around the campfire with a bunch of friends and it was nine o'clock and you said, okay, I got a couple of hours. And they said, Tim, you know, hit us. What's what the hell's in your book? Right. I'd love the, the, you know, the campfire story so that everyone listening could not just hear what's in your book, but walk away with a enough of your wisdom to look at their life through the lens of what your book really has to say. Yeah, sure. The so that. Two main points, I think it's under it's important to understand to understand where I'm going with the book is the central singularity and the encompassing horizon of the cosmos. Um, mm -hmm. I mentioned Carl Jung's near death experience before, and uh, so I'll mention that first, and then I'll mention his what I call the Leap Day letter of 1952, where he wrote a letter to J.R. Smithies trying to equate psychic energy with mass with the E equals MC squared equation. And his final formula was psyche equals highest intensity in the smallest space. Mm -hmm. And he wrote it in the context of general relativity. And he learned about relativity theory from Einstein himself. And that according to general relativity, the highest intensity is infinite density of matter. And the smallest space is zero volume. And he mentioned both of those concepts in that letter, and that's the definition of a gravitational singularity. So that's where this equation, psyche equals singularity, comes from. Mm -hmm. It's a point of infinite density with zero extension in space, and it contains all of space and time. And all of space and time comes out of it at the Big Bang. Here's another important piece of this puzzle. And this I got from a philosophy professor named Robert Bruce Ware, who wrote a book about Hegel. And he was equating Hegel's concept of the absolute idea with the gravitational singularity. And he brought in Leibniz's principle of the identity of indiscernibles, according to which, if you cannot tell the difference between two things, they are identical. And Ware was saying you can't tell the difference between the structure of two singularities because they're mathematical points. They have no structure. Mm -hmm. And you can't differentiate them by their different locations in space and time because they're outside of space and time. Because according to relativity theory, a point of infinite gravity is equivalent to a point traveling infinitely fast. And if you travel at even the much slower speed of light, you exit space and time because of what Einstein called length contraction and time dilation. That's relativity theory. If you took a clock and you accelerate it close to the speed of light, then the hands slow down and slow down and they stop at the speed of light. And the object would also contract in the direction of travel until it would compact into nothing at the speed of light. So a singularity is outside of space and time. Therefore, all of the singularities which exist the original singularity of the Big Bang, the singularities inside black holes strewn throughout the galaxies, the singularity of the supermassive that are inside the supermassive black holes in the center of galaxies, and very importantly, and you mentioned David Bohm in the implicate order, quantum physics indicates there's a singularity at every single point of the quantum vacuum underlying three-dimensional space. Mm. So they're omnipresent, strewn throughout space-time, but they're all outside space-time. So they're in some inconceivable way, there's, there are many and yet simultaneously one. And just while I'm on this topic, we mentioned earlier, what's the difference between self with a capital S and self with a small s? And the way I differentiate the archetype of the self is that's the singularity who sees through the perspective of every other singularity simultaneously 
whereas you and I are singularities, but we only perceive through our own subjective point of view. Mm -hmm. the, su <clears throat> the supreme singularity sees through everyone's subjective point of view simultaneously <clears throat> and achieves thereby the union of subjectivity and objectivity by taking the subjective point of view to the infinite extreme. Which is really like saying God, isn't it? It's exactly like saying God. It, yeah. Self is just another word for God. Yeah. The, the self with a capital S. Mm -hmm. and, and we're all little parts and parcels of God. We have all of the qualities of God, but just not the quantity. We're like fractals. Yeah, exactly. 